Welcome to the Marshall Performing Arts Center. I'm Mark Harvey, I chair the Department of Theater here, and I'm going to take you on a tour um, behind the scenes of the Marshall Performing Arts Center. Um, the space was designed in 1974 by Tom Vecchi, and uh, Mr. Vecchi had a very interesting challenge ahead of him when he built this space. He, sp he built it for the spoken word. Uh, many people refer to it as a very dry space, so the word from the stage travels to all the audience members that they can hear, no microphone uh, necessary. But he also wanted to have two different kinds of theaters. He wanted a thrust configuration where the actors came out into the space, but then also a proscenium theater. And so what he did, um, I'll take you down here, he designed um, three hydraulic lifts. There's three stages, this is lift one, there's lift two and lift three. They're all hydraulic so that in this configuration you can have the actors come way down stage, but if you're in a proscenium configuration, these three lifts can go down to house level. We have another hundred seats that fill in and then you have a proscenium stage. We do a dance concert every year and so um, oftentimes we will use the proscenium configuration in that regard. Um, now, scene designers are very creative because these lifts also can go down another 12 feet. And so, uh, designers have them all different levels for all different types of plays. Sometimes we move them during plays. So, they, the space is very interesting um, having this ability, having three hydraulic lifts for, as a part of the stage. The space seats 530 people. We're ADA compliant. Another 100 seats can fit here for the dance concert. Um, you know, built in 1974, um, uh, Mr. Vecchi always came around and asked, you know, how we were doing adapting to technology um, extremely well. Um, it's amazing how um, we have been able to adapt the space to uh, the new technology that we have. Uh, we have, on the ceiling, we have five front of house lighting positions. Um, you know, I've been a lighting designer here for over 30 years, and I still find cool new places to hang lights. Um, we have actors' balconies, stage left and stage right, um, so we can perform up there. Um, oftentimes, I'll use those for lighting positions as well. Um, another thing about this space that I think is very interesting is the fact that it has 25 speaker surround sound. And up here is our audio workstation. So in 2012, we did a $3 million renovation and because sound has become so important in the theater, they built this audio workstation. Um, new digital console, we use QLab for all our video and sound needs. Um, over here there is uh, uh, 24 microphones. All the musicals are mic'd, you know, wireless microphones. And um, having the sound being able to come from so many different locations, it has made a real difference in the shows we do. Um, in this space, UMD Theater does three shows each semester. Um, well, actually two shows in here and one in the Dudley sh uh, Theater I'll show you later. Um, usually, uh, well, at least one musical a year, sometimes two. The last couple of years we've programmed two musicals in the show. But um, student designers, um, you know, the student is a design um, a major here and will do the design work and then have uh, faculty mentors as well. Um, we have two of us in lighting and sound. Um, Ethan Hollinger is the lighting and sound faculty and then um, as department head I also design lights and sound here as well. But the students do most of the designing. Um, every show will have you know students because we're strictly an undergraduate program you know students get all the major roles, um, the students get the design assignments and that's just one of our um, missions that we have here is to you know focus on the undergraduate program. We also have two degree programs. We have a Bachelor of Arts degree, which is meant to be very flexible. If a student wants to spend a year overseas, say at Worcester University in England, um, oftentimes they'll um, opt for the BA degree. We also offer the BFA degree, <clears throat> which is uh, much more intensified, um, very proscribed. There's seven different emphases within the BFA. The student has to do an interview, audition for uh, a slot in one of those uh, BFA programs. All right, well, this is the uh, light booth for the uh, main house. Um, you know, in terms of technology, it's great that the department gets around $20,000 a semester to spend on new technology. Um, we have, this is the element lighting console. We also have an ion console. Um, lighting students love because all, uh, um, not only is it digital, but it's also touchscreen and 
um, you know, Ian Hollinger is uh, advising students on how to program on these lighting consoles. And then to the right here is the stage management location. Um, uh, Broadway World just determined that the UMD stage management program is in the top 20 in the country. And so we are very blessed to have the kind of leadership that we have in our stage management uh, students in the BFA program. Um, the stage managers use a two-channel headset system. Um, we have 13, 15 people on the same, you know, backstage on headsets, and the stage manager can put half the group on channel one, half the group on channel two, and so, and then talk to them independently. Um, so it makes, you know, the tech week uh, very efficient for the stage manager. Once a play opens, faculty all walk away. Um, the students run the shows. The stage management team is in charge of getting the students ready. Um, of course, all the performers are um, undergraduate students. So the students have a real sense of ownership. You know, once a play opens, they feel like it's theirs. And so that's our way of helping develop that leadership quality that uh, we have in so many of our students at UMD. All right, so now we're on the main stage. It is 70 feet wide and 32 feet deep. Um, on the far side, you'll see 32 line sets. That's for scenery and lighting. Um, the house is, has a fly hall loft of 70 feet, so we can fly scenery completely out of view of the audience. We have four onstage electrics, and during the renovation in 2012, we electrified those so that we can now bring those down and load them all simultaneously. Um, before the renovation, it usually took about five days to load a show in, and now it takes an afternoon. So the technology has really helped us in terms of productivity. We've also put in a loading gallery. Um, the, the fly system kind of works like a teeter-totter. When, when the pipes are down, the battens are down, and we're putting scenery on them, the arbors, which is a counterweight system on the far side, it's up. So you're up and down on either ends of the, uh, of the fly system. The ideal is you're putting scenery on, you know, thousands of pounds of scenery on these lines. At the same time, you're loading counterweights up at the bridge up there, and it, it goes super fast. And then once it's balanced, then anyone, you know, um, a small person can go over there and pull the rope and fly thousands of pounds of scenery out of the way. It's, it's amazing how, how well it works. In the back, you'll see this gray, um, it's called a rear projection screen. We do a lot of projection work here. Um, sometimes we will move it, we'll put in the back, we'll do front projections, but there's been plenty of times we move it, you know, way forward, and the, the performance is out on the thrust, and we'll project from the back. We do lots of video. Um, we do QLab 4.0 for all our video control, um, but there's a lot of um, opportunity for our students who, who say, well, you know, I want to major in theater, but I'm also interested in graphic design. And then they're like, wow, I can use my graphic design in order to do theater. Those kinds of collaborations happen all the time. We are dimmer per circuit in this house. There's 238. And what that means is, is that individual control of over 230 light fixtures. We also have extensive amount of movers, you know, these, uh, these uh, light fixtures with computers on board so they can move and change colors. We have an array of LED fixtures, so that real good saturated color that we need. But the technology just keeps coming, and it's really great the way the university supports the program by giving us funding every semester to help us, you know, uh, uh, stay um, kind of, you know, to the status quo, the state of the art. Um, lighting system so and and audio as well so all right we're in the Dudley uh, experimental theater um, this space is a black box space as you can see it's uh, 42 feet wide 46 feet deep 15 feet tall um, it seats about a hundred people right now it's set up for a classroom situation with social distancing so the chairs are all six feet apart but typically as a theater it seats about a hundred What's great about this space is the fact that it is completely modular. Now, right now, it's set up in a, con a, a proscenium configuration, but we've done plays in a thrust configuration, plays in the round, um, all kinds of uh, variations. Um, the UMD Theater does two plays in this space each year, one each semester. But then um, the student group, Stage 2 Theater Company, they do typically four plays a year, and they'll do all four of their productions in here. What's cool about stage two is the fact that um, they have their own board of directors. 
They choose their own season. They get the rights. They pay the royalties for their own plays. Um, they, they allocate budget for the different production areas. They do their own marketing. And um, alumni have come back and said um, what really helped be involved with stage two was that they start their own theater companies. And there are, I don't know, half a dozen theater companies across the country that have been started by UMD students who say, well, we want to do the plays that we want to do for the audience that we are targeting. And so it, it's a great experience for the stage two theater company um, to you know, produce their own season. So um, it's kind of great to have them around. It's also cool in the fact that stage two gives young actors, you know, inexperienced actors, you know, underclassmen, and young designers a shot at doing stuff because oftentimes, you know, the main season, the stakes are pretty high. Um, you know, we have our patrons come expecting a, a you know, a fully professional production. Well, stage two is a, a, it's a much rawer, much more experimental, cutting edge type stuff. And I just find that the students just have a blast learning by doing. So um, it's a great space to work in. All right, well, we're in the scene shop now. Um, we have four faculty and staff in the uh, scenic properties area. Uh, Sean Dumb is our uh, staff technical director. He runs the building. And then we have uh, Scott Boyle, who is our faculty TD and supervises the students who want to learn to be technical directors. Kurt Phillips is our scene design faculty. And then Katie Cornish is our stagecraft practicum faculty. What's important is that each of them have a specific role and for incoming students who have never worked with power tools before, um, Katie Cornish, as the practicum faculty member, um, works with them one-on-one -on -one to get them all, um, you know, uh, they, they have to do their proficiency on the power tools before they are actually working on shows. Um, to my left here is the welding workshop, and the, st the faculty and staff teach students how to weld. We do a lot of steel in our shows. And then as we walk into the scene shop here, I mean, various power tools. The table saw is here, the chop saw, the radial arm saw, the panel saw. And students do all the work. Um, you know, for every show that we do, there are supervisors, student supervisors. We'll have a master carpenter for a show. Uh, we'll have a paint charge for a show, a prop master for a show. And these students tend to be upperclassmen who have kind of learned these skills. And then we assign them crew. And then, of course, the faculty and staff then supervise those students. So um, lots of work goes on back here, building all these shows. You know, um, the shows tend to overlap. While one show is running on main stage, we're back here building the next show. So along this wall is the paint frame. The paint frame is for drops, these huge, huge canvases that get hung up for scenery in the theater. It actually telescopes into the floor so that the uh, paint crew doesn't have to climb ladders way up there to paint the top. They just bring the whole frame down and then uh, they paint it as they raise it, uh, as they raise it up. Over here is the, uh, the paint area. Um, we use specially you know, scenic paints for the theater. Um, again, there's a paint charge for every production and so the students learn how to mix paint and how to paint. There's a paint crew. So it's uh, another learning experience for, for our students. All right, well, this is the uh, Impact 155, the act, main acting studio. And um, majors, we have 120 majors at UMD, and we're just about 50-50. Half are the theater B, BA, where they get a minor in a related field. The other half are BFA students. And of those BFA students, those 60 students, 40 are in the performance areas. And they tend to be divided among the acting cohort and the musical theater cohort. Musical theater students, of course, are taking classes in dance, uh, 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 singing, you know, voice and acting every semester. The acting cohort really focus in this room. Um, we have uh, a sequence of acting one through eight um, for uh, students, so eight semesters here in the acting program. They have a, an acting class every semester. Um, this space is right currently it's set up for social distancing. Um, typically we kind of have a, an audience of 20 here and then the actors will perform on this side of the space. Um, but I think the acting really quite good, believable acting is the core of our program. Um, you know, everything kind of builds upon that believable choices that actors make. And it's, it's wonderful to watch the actors grow 
um, as they develop in the program here. And so, you know, when they're on the stage, yes, we have all this wonderful scenery and lighting and costumes, um, but that good quality acting is at the center of everything that we do here. We're in the costume shop. Um, there are three faculty and staff that work here in the costume shop. Laura Petrosky is our costume shop supervisor. Um, Caitlin Quinn is our costume design faculty. And then Alice Schaefer is the costume construction um, uh, practicum instructor. Um, to your left is the um, dyeing and painting room. This is where they'll dye fabric. <clears throat> um, they also distress clothes in this space. Um, so it's one of the rooms that kind of used towards the end of the process. So uh, clothes look that they're worn, uh, you know, well worn and, and broken in. Um, coming this way, um, this is the stitching room. I'm sorry. This is the this is the cutting room in here. Um, again, you know, students do all the work. I mean, uh, we have student designers, and the students will, will give their designs to the the crew, and the crew will lay out fabric and and cut fabric. Um, we often use uh, dress forms like this one in the corner because everything's tailor made to the actor. Uh, once they use a dress form that's the same dimensions as the um, as the actor, then they'll come in and have fittings, and so. You know, they'll um, do a fitting on the actor and they'll pin it and then re, re uh, sew it together. So it's, it's a very extensive process. I mean, on this side you see the rack of clothes. This would be for a typical show um, that, uh, that a designer has done. And so once the clothes are racked up, then they're wheeled into the uh, 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 makeup rooms where the actors can put those costumes on. And then back here, This is stitching. Now, once clothes are, are cut out in the cutting room, they're brought back here and they're stitched together. Um, oftentimes, students don't know how to run a sewing machine, and so that's why we have Alice, Pierce, or Alice Schaefer with us. Alice is great because she will walk every student through how to use all different kinds of uh, equipment. Um, we have, like, we have sergers. I love this machine over here because it's a digital embroidery machine, and you can see some of the uh, patterns that they've done in the past with, uh, uh, with digital embroidery. Um, costumes is not just clothes. Um, they do shoes here, they do jewelry, any, hats, anything the actor wears is what the costume uh, program is about, uh, is, is responsible for. So a uh, lot goes on down here. Uh, Laura does an extensive amount of rental um, because we have costumes going back for years and so um, Programs, you know, all across the upper Midwest will call us and say, you know, do you have, you know, such such show? Do you have, um, you know, Hello Dolly? And we'll just pack it up and ship it off. And, and that's one of our missions that we have is we support a lot of theater companies um, here in, in the, both in Duluth and in the Midwest region. Well, this is one of our two makeup rooms. Um, this is makeup room A and this is makeup room B. Um, Caitlin Quinn teaches a series of makeup classes. She also teaches classes on um, uh, wigs and uh, you know hair styling. Um, the students all learn the, how to do the, put their own makeup on. Um, if it's a small cast, they'll put them all in one makeup room. But if it's a large cast, then we'll take them in both spaces. But um, Halloween, this place gets very popular because you know we do they do a blood and guts makeup and and uh, all those horrific things. So this is um, Impact 21, the overflow uh, makeup rooms for the chorus. And uh, yes, there are times when we, we need more makeup stations than we have in the two makeup rooms. You know, when we did Coriolana, uh, cast of 42, and so we used all these stations as well. But more commonly, um, our dance program has grown so much. Um, some years ago, we put this sprung floor in so the students all refer to this as the tap room. It's got a low ceiling, so you can't lift like, as you would in ballet, but it's great for tap dancing. And so they teach uh, four different levels of uh, different, four different dances and three different levels of each dance. They tap, modern, jazz, and ballet, and they teach you know, three levels on each of those areas. So um, lots of students in here tapping away. This is Impact 51, the design studio. Um, lots goes on in here because we have scene design classes, costume design classes, uh, lighting design classes, and uh, technical direction classes in this, uh, you know, drafting in this room. Um, you know, lots of craft building, model building, rendering techniques, 
um, goes on in this room. We also have a light lab where we can uh, light up uh, scenic models or fabric swatches to determine what color we want to use uh, you know, for a given play. Um, there's been times when we've brought the director down and actually set the model up and, and program cues like, oh, we want this look for this scene, this look for this scene. It's, a, it's very helpful in terms of the uh, process that we use. Um, every play we do has a 12-week process. Six weeks is in the planning where the designers are meeting with the director and you know, um, lots of brainstorming, research going on. Uh, they'll bring in imagery and show it to the director and, and they'll slowly kind of decide on a direction. But that's for tr that production team is scene design, cost design, lighting design, sound design, and stage management. Almost always all students. Everyone else, like faculty will design once a year and have an assistant, but most of the design projects are by the students. Then, after six weeks, that's when the show goes in the shops, and that's when they start building scenery, making the costumes, hanging the lights, and that's when the rehearsal process begins. So by that time, the director has a cast, and so then they'll start their rehearsals, and then that six-week period leads up to what we call Tech Week, which is one week before we open, and during Tech Week, it's when we integrate all the elements together. Um, it's very stressful. You know, we do 10 hours out of 12 on a Saturday and a Sunday. And, but what's great is, is to watch the collaboration, the problem solving that, that goes on when uh, these designers and these technicians and the actors and the director are all working together to come up with the best possible solution. Um, it, it's very collaborative. It's not hierarchical. There's no one who says, oh, sorry, I get to decide for everybody. That's not true. Everyone works together, and um, it, it, it's amazing to watch um, um, that, that process. And then what we end up with is so much better than what one person could imagine. And that's the beauty of the theater. Is when, it's, when it's done well, um, everyone can be proud of the work once it's done. So it's great to be a part of that process. So we're in Impact One, the main dance studio. Um, Impact One is 50 feet wide and 25 feet deep. Um, it is designed to be a mirror image of the main stage. So when um, rehearsals happen in this space, the actors can have the same sense of space as they would as if they were on main stage. The classes in this space tend to center around the modern uh, ballet um, and jazz classes. Um, it has a sprung floor, uh, a mirror wall so that the class can look at themselves and the rest of their dancers so they can stay in, in, um, well, in synchronous harmony with everybody else. Um, it's got an excellent sound system in here, um, ballet bars on either ends for the ballet classes, and then the uh, black curtain is designed so that the instructor says, okay, now I want you to you know, do the dance without seeing each other, so they just close the curtain and then you know, they can go through rehearsal that way. Um, it's, it's an incredible space. As I uh, mentioned before, there are three levels of ballet that's taught here, three levels of jazz taught here, and three levels of modern. Um, the dance minor is very popular. Um, students can either take the applied dance minor um, or the dance studies minor. The, dance, uh, the applied dance minor is about students who want to dance, and uh, dance studies is about students who want to study you know, how dance has, is incorporated into our culture. Um, musical theater students, of course, you know, the triple threat, they are in here taking dance classes every semester uh, because they have to qualify at the level two out of, level, uh, out of three levels. So this, this room is very busy um, during the academic year. Well, thanks for joining us on this virtual tour of the Marsh Performing Arts Center. Uh, we want you to come and check us out. Uh, come to our website, the UMD Theater. And uh, when you've got time, please come and see a show. So uh, thank you all very much.